In this video, we're going to work through an interview question from our 2024 question bank for engineering. If you're interested in broader interview support, including our taught courses, question banks, and mock interviews, do take a look at our website, www.vantageofmissions.co.uk. So in this problem, we're considering a projectile launched from horizontal ground at O at a speed of U, where we're allowed to vary the angle of projection above the horizontal. The set of all the points which the projectile could theoretically reach, we're going to call the envelope of safety. So already this is a little bit different from a normal projectile's problem, in that rather than talking about the angle of projection and the trajectory it follows, we're considering all the different possible trajectories that we could sweep out if we varied the angle of projection. And we want to show that the equation of the boundary of the envelope of safety is this particular equation. Not especially surprising to see that it's a parabola because we know that parabolas are inherently connected to projectile motion. Well, why don't we begin by writing down the general equation of motion just to get some mathematical handle on the problem. So if I launch at speed u at an angle theta above the horizontal, horizontally there is no force acting. We always in projectile problems neglect air resistance. So my initial horizontal velocity by resolving is u cos theta. And because I'm traveling at this constant speed, there's no force slowing me down horizontally. I can use speed equals distance over time to see that my x coordinate after t seconds is u cos theta t. For the y coordinate, we need to be a little bit more careful. There's gravity decelerating me or accelerating me downwards, if you like, which means that suvat is going to be required. So I can do a suvat where s is y, u is my initial vertical velocity, which is u sine theta. Final velocity, guess I don't really know or care. Acceleration is minus g, so minus because I'm choosing downwards as positive, and t is the number of seconds t cinch launch. So I'll choose the suvat equation that doesn't involve v, so that is s equals ut plus half a t squared, to see that y equals u sine theta t, minus a half g t squared. So it's worth for an interview candidate making sure you're ready to get to these sort of parametric equations of motion for a projectile. Very, very important for lots of problems. Now, as I said there, really mathematically, what these are are parametric equations in parameter t. So if we want to get a real handle on what's going on across all points of the motion, I'm not that interested in t because I'm not looking at a specific moment in the motion, I'm interested in the whole of the motion. It makes a lot of sense to try to eliminate t and thereby obtain a quadratic, uh, presumably in, in say x for instance, right? So a Cartesian equation of motion rather than a parametric equation of motion. And this is just like what we do in RPR mathematics. Very often if we have parametric equations, we eliminate the parameter. So this equation tells me that t is x over u cos theta, and I can plug that into the y equation to see that y equals, now, the u's cancel um, between there and there, and the sine over cos becomes a tan. So that first term is going to be x tan theta, and then I get half g x squared over u squared cos squared theta. So this is now a quadratic uh, Cartesian equation of motion, which looks good. I suppose one thing that would be very nice to do is to try and package up the trig in a nicer way, because I've got a cos and I've also got a tan. But strictly speaking, what we have there is a sec squared. And sec squared we know we can write as 1 plus tan squared. So to be clear, that's not on a denominator, that's now a multiple. So it's a really useful trick to remember that we can rewrite the Cartesian equation of motion using these elementary trig identities such that all the trig dependence is packaged up as tan rather than as both tan and cos, for instance. Now, for brevity, let's write lambda to represent tan because as theta varies, tan can take all real values. So I can think of tan theta as being like its own parameter in the problem that captures my angle of projection. To make things look a little bit nicer, let's just introduce this lambda. Just an aesthetic choice, you don't need to. It doesn't do anything for us mathematically. So I've got x lambda minus gx squared by 2u squared 
1 plus lambda squared. So there have been interview questions asked which just boil down to deriving this equation. But of course, we're choosing interesting, more extended problems for these videos. Now, this equation is quite remarkable because it has a dual perspective. We can view it in two ways. We can view it firstly as a quadratic in x. So you can imagine fixing lambda, fixing your angle of projection. You've got a quadratic in x, which means you're studying the points along one trajectory. But there's nothing to stop me from also considering this thing as a quadratic in lambda. Now, as lambda varies, I'm looking at different angles of projection. So by viewing it as a quadratic in lambda, I'm studying different trajectories. And because the envelope of safety, this thing we're interested in, is the set of points I can reach across all angles of projection, surely this perspective is the one we'd like to take for this question. So let's write this as a quadratic in lambda. So I've got y equals minus gx squared by 2u squared lambda squared plus x lambda minus gx squared by 2u squared. So armed with this equation, which somehow lets us study the different possible trajectories we could follow, how can we study which points are reachable and which points aren't? Well, that's easy, right? Because the point x, y is going to be reachable precisely when, once I plug in the numbers for that x and y, there is a solution. And by a solution, I mean in lambda, because obviously lambda we're viewing as the variable here. So if I want to know, do I pass through the point 1, 5? I put the numbers 1 and 5 here, and I study then whether there is a lambda, whether there is a value for tan theta, an angle for the projection, really, which would let us pass through that point. But now I can say, well, surely if I'm on the boundary, right on the verge of being reachable or not reachable, then that should tell me that the discriminant of the quadratic in lambda, once I bring the y over and group it with the constant, should be zero. Because if I'm right on the boundary of the envelope of safety, that means even by moving x or y as appropriate infinitesimally smaller way, it's possible to go outside the, bound the envelope of safety and not be reachable. But if my quadratic is right on the verge of having no solutions, it must be in a case where the discriminant is actually zero. It's right on the verge of going negative, just as you are just on the verge of going outside the envelope of safety. Notice, by the way, that from this analysis, we can see that if I want to go through a particular point, there are at most two values of lambda corresponding to two angles of projection, two acute angles of projection, uh, which would let me go through it. So we can see there's either one, two or zero because it's a quadratic. So let's write down what we get from a zero discriminant on this quadratic. Hopefully it will give us straight away what we want. So this is A, this is B, this is C. Oh, I need to bring the, that over, of course, because to take a discriminant, I need uh, zero to be the subject on the other side. So I get B squared minus 4A C. Now I'll... Uh, so I'll use that minus to turn that to a plus, that minus that is, minus 4ac. But I've got another minus from the a that's going to give me a minus overall, gx squared by 2u squared plus y. That's got to be zero on my boundary. Now I think we're very much on the home run. So I will, I can cancel through an x squared. Um, I'm not worried as I do that about x squared being zero because, yeah, there is a point presumably on the envelope of safety where x is zero but there are lots of points where x is not zero. And this equation has to be true for every point on the envelope of safety. So it has to be true even if I pull away that factor of x squared. Um, so I've got one minus overall. Now that with that becomes just a two. Two g over u squared gx squared by two u squared plus y equals zero. Let's expand some brackets. So I get 1 minus 2g squared. Well, the 2 cancels with that, actually. It's minus gx squared over u to the 4 minus 2gy over u squared equals 0. 
Let's multiply through by u squared. Well, let's make 2gy the subject. So 2gy over u squared is gx squared by g squared x squared rather u to the 4. No, it's not. It's 1 minus that because I'm just hopping this over to the other side. And that means y is u squared over 2g minus gx squared over 2u squared. Well, I've multiplied by u squared and divided by 2g. That is precisely the envelope of safety. That's the equation we were asked to find. So lots of really transferable ideas in this problem. Notably, when we're going to deal with uh, projectiles, it's often a good idea to construct this Cartesian equation of motion. And remember, if you're asking a question not about points along a single trajectory, but about all possible trajectories, viewing it as a quadratic in tan theta, which we chose to call lambda, is a very useful approach.